All right, so so far we've been talking about Lewis structures with uh, covalent compounds. And just you know, remember, all this comes down to valence electrons and what they're doing. And so sometimes you're going to form ionic bonds. Sometimes you're going to form a covalent bond. Uh, and you need to have the right valence electron configuration in order to form any bond. So two heliums, for example, they're never going to form a, a, any type of bond. They don't want to share electrons. They don't want to give up electrons because they already have noble gas configuration, which we know is the most stable. And so uh, you can write Lewis structures for ionic bonds too. It's pretty simple. And so we've mentioned like sodium chloride, you're gonna put the ions in brackets and then you're gonna put uh, electrons uh, around the atoms and they probably will have a complete octet or, or no octet, which is basically a complete octet, but one uh, principal quantum number lower. Right, so like chlorine started out with seven valence electrons. Here it has eight valence electrons. Sodium started out with one valence electrons. It gave that electron to chlorine, hence has zero, right? And that's an extended solid. Uh, it's an ionic compound that exists as an extended solid. It exists at what's, what's called a lattice, okay? Um, you can have lattices with, with uh, polyatomic ions, right? So like calcium nitrate here. You're gonna have calcium. That's gonna give two electrons, one each, to each nitrate and then each nitrate is going to be stable as NO3 minus okay calcium is stable because it gave up two electrons becoming uh, uh, like argon before it the noble gas configuration before it okay and uh, but within each nitrate ion it's NO3 minus you're gonna have covalent bonding uh, holding those four atoms together so just like we're doing before so now this, this structure, right, has covalency in it, covalent bonds in it, and it has ionic bonds in it. That's very common for, for more complicated molecules to have both types of bonding motifs, all right? So the lattice energy uh, in an ionic compound is basically the change in energy that occurs when gaseous ions form an ionic solid. And you can think about this as basically the stabilization uh, energy to form all those minus and positive charges together in an extended solid. You can use thermochemistry and Hess's law to uh, calculate this lattice energy. That's what the slide is, is showing you about. I just wanted to introduce the concept. We're not gonna do any calculations um, in class about this. There's just too many things to go over. Your book does go over it, but uh, you don't need to need it, know it for the purposes of this course. So uh, let's look at these two structures. Uh, we're gonna start talking about exceptions to the octet rule. If you looked at these two structures, uh, based on everything we've gone over so far, you would say the structure on the left uh, is very bad. And the reason is because it doesn't have an octet, uh, satisfied, octet satisfied for boron, right? It has two, four, six valence electrons. All the fluorines have eight, and that's good. And now look at the structure at the right. Boron has two, four, six, eight, good for boron, boron. And this fluorine does two, two, four, six, eight. So the one on the right looks correct. But in reality, this is the better Lewis structure, the one on the left. So why is that? This is a, an exception to the octet rule, okay? And the reason where this exception comes uh, to place is because boron is pretty electropositive and fluorine, as we know, is the most electronegative element. And so fluorine really wants electrons. And so if you calculate the formal charges for the structure on the right, um, fluorine is gonna have a formal charge of plus one. We can go through that really fast now, right? Uh, fluorine has seven valence electrons minus the four non-bonding electrons and minus the two bonds, seven minus four minus two is one, okay? And boron has three valence electrons. There's no uh, non-bonding electrons or lone pairs and there's four uh, bonding uh, bonds. So it's gonna be three minus zero minus four. That's negative one. So. Boron's very electropositive, and yet it has a negative formal charge here. Fluorine, the most electronegative, has a positive formal charge. You're basically saying in this that fluorine is going to give uh, uh, electron density in this double bond to boron, and that's not going to happen. Fluorine, fluorine really wants uh, electrons more than any other element. So, so much so that it will cause boron to violate the octet rule in doing so, okay? So the one on the left is the correct structure. It's a better reflection of reality. Um, that one has uh, formal charges of zero across all the atoms. 
Now, is it a super stable, stable structure or super stable compound? No, this compound born trifluoride is, is very uh, uh, electron deficient and it wants to react with anything it can to basically steal an electron, the boron does. And so these can have you know, weird properties and be generally pretty reactive. Uh, boron, since it's pretty electropositive, you will oftentimes show this exception where it'll only have uh, six valence electrons. Uh, beryllium is even more extreme. Sometimes it'll show cases where it only has four valence electrons. So just be on the lookout for bor boron and beryllium and know that these are two uh, uh, exceptions, uh, common exceptions to the octet rule, and they'll have uh, less octet, uh, less electrons than the octet rule says. They'll have um, six for boron and, and four for beryllium. If you, if you remember that, you'll, you'll be okay.